Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Hot News. It's a big one. We got, we got a heck, oof, NVIDIA stuff all the day long. And speaking of all the day long, big thanks to everybody that showed up on Friday for our 24 hour charity stream. It was our most successful one yet, and we quadrupled last year's numbers. We raised over $43,000 for Syngap Research Fund for a research organization that could potentially help cure the rare disease that afflicts my son and hundreds of other people across the world. So it's a huge moment for us as a family because this means that we have a hope for our son going forward. And it also means that you guys, you showed up, which means that we had a few things go down, such as I got a crosshawk and then I had crosshawk, which is a 90 degree mohawk. And then I also had to diet hot pink. So uh, yeah. I am meth Vegeta. He's meth Vegeta. I am 2020 Vegeta. I'm meth. I know I look good. I'm rocking this. I figured out why this is so disturbing and it's because it's kind of like you're balding and then it starts, but then it also is a bamboozle at the back. So it's disturbing on two levels because like, it's just not what you would anticipate from a normal person's haircut. Anyways, huge thanks to everybody who showed up to the charity stream. Also big thanks to our sponsors for the charity stream. We had Ting, Synergy, MSI, and Newegg all come together to help us with giveaways for the charity stream, which I'll be selecting a little later today on Monday. And I'll be letting everybody either know on Twitch or by via email. So keep your eyes tuned to those things so that if you get an announcement of whether or not you won, that way you'll know. Anyways, uh, that's it's all good stuff. I'm very excited. Thank you, everybody who tuned in for that. And also, don't forget that tomorrow is officially the live stream keynote of NVIDIA's next gen Ampere architecture. We're going to be live streaming that over on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. Come give us a follow over there. Come watch it with us. We're going to have a good time with NVIDIA fully announcing everything. And you might even catch me live today if you're watching this as soon as the video comes out. So just come check us out over on Twitch. So yes, big thanks for the charity string. Come watch us tomorrow for NVIDIA's official announcement, but we don't need to wait for NVIDIA's official announcement because we got the official details right here. RTX 3090 and 3080 specifications being confirmed by multiple sources. Number one is video cards direct sources having confirmed the 3090 and 3080 specifications. You can see here that the 24 gig 3090 is launching as well as the 10 gigabyte 3080, but there's apparently still a 20 gigabyte 3080 coming out, but that's not necessarily going to be released anytime soon. So these are expected to be the cards that are going to come out the soonest in September with the 3070 coming out a little later on in September. So all three cards are getting announced tomorrow, but we're getting the 3090 and 30. 80 up front and first. So these are the direct specifications. It appears that all the rumors of Nvidia switching to Samsung might be wrong because they are indeed going to be on seven nanometers according to the official information right now, at least for the higher end chips based on GA102, 5,248 CUDA cores for the 3090, 4,352 for the 3080. You can see the clock speeds as well as the VRAM amount and speed. These are wicked fast cards. I don't have a source for this, but we're expecting the 3090 to come in at $1,400 USD. That's the anticipated price, and it should be around 35 to 50% faster than the 2080 Ti. Is that reasonable to you? Does that sound good? And we're not just talking about ray tracing specifications because it is supposed to have second gen ray tracing with third gen tensor cores, which could potentially allow it to be much faster in those applications. Let me know what you think of these specs down below, but that's while that's video cards confirmed specifications, we got an NVIDIA AIB partner putting their crap out there. Gain word confirming the 3090 and 3080 Phoenix cards. You can see them right here, but you can also see the specification sheets, which just confirms everything that has been out there so far. HDMI 2.1, DisplayPort 1.4a or B, I can't remember which one it is. 3090s, 3080s, a bunch of chips coming out. They're gonna have the RTX 3090 Phoenix golden sample, which looks like it's gonna have higher clock speeds. These are gonna be beefy cards with beefy coolers. You can see their 2.7 slot right there. And then we also have the die pictured from another uh, little bit of AIB partner leakage. And then the ROG Strix 3090 being pictured right here. As you can see, it does appear that this is gonna be also a 2.7 slot card. Zotac with their 30 series, you got the Amp Extreme, the Trinity Hollow, the Trinity, uh, and the Twin Edge Hollow and Twin Edge for the 3070. So you can see these cards here. I do like this 
this backplate design that Zotac's going with here. I think Zotac has tremendously stepped up their design on Cooler since the 9 Series. 9 Series was rough, 10 Series was okay, 20 Series was good, and now the 30 Series seems to be even better. So Zotac actually hitting it pretty decently. The question I have, though, is which of these cards is going to fit into the uh, mini PS5 replacement PC that I have because none of these look like they're going to work at 2.7 slots. A two slot card barely, barely fits. So I had to even Dremel out the Fractal Node 202 to even fit that two slot card. So ugh, yeah, whew, this is going to be rough if I'm going to try to put this in a small form factor. But that's not the only card Zotac has out there. No, you might remember we talked about last week, the 2060 Super OC White Edition. It's perfect time to launch a 2060 Super. Good Thanks, Zotac. Love you. That's awesome. And black PCB for a white card. You're doing you're doing great stuff. Also, we got up close pictures of the Ampere power connector. You can see here the 12 pin is just slightly bigger, bigger than the 8 pin. This is a rough looking picture. My goodness, what did they do to those connectors? But with the launch of the new connectors is also what's gonna be the launch of what I've deemed the NVIDIA branded certified power supplies. And MSI looks like they're gonna be the first to bat at that with the MPG GF power supplies for the RTX 30 series. You can see here, they're releasing their own brand of power supplies, but then, yeah, they include a 12 pin. They're ready for Ampere cards. hey -o! NVIDIA ready power supplies, my friends. Do you have one? No, you don't because you're lame and boring, just like the rest of us. So here's apparently the new pricing structure for the next gen cards, $1,400 for the top of the line, 3090. The 3080 is gonna come in at 799. That's for the 10 gig version. The 20 gig version probably will round out at that $1,000 price point. The 3070 will come in at $600 and that's supposed to be 2080 Ti level performance. They're cutting the price per performance in half there. And then the 3060, which we don't have much detail on, will likely come in at the $400 price point. I've seen this confirmed by a few people out on the internet. So let me know what you think of these price points is this in line with where you're at are you buying a 3090 or 3080 or are you going to be holding on for a smaller end card let me know down below in the comments but in case you're holding out for tiger lake which is a smaller end gpu well a promotional video leaked out ahead of the launch which is supposed to be coming on september 2nd and that's we just we know it's good because we've seen like benchmarks live benchmarks from ryan shrout he tweeted a video of it playing Battlefield 5 Ultra at 30 FPS at 1080p for integrated graphics. That's pretty phenomenal. We'll see how this does once it comes out on September 2nd or gets announced on September 2nd. But that's not the only GPU launch we have going on. No, my friends, AMD releasing, launching quietly, whisper quietly, the RX 5300, dropping it. It's there. I don't know where you buy it. I haven't been able to find it in stock anywhere. Uh, and it's not confirmed if this is gonna be an OEM only card or if you're gonna be able to buy this retail, but you can see all the specifications here. It's a, it's a tiny, tiny car with three gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. So it's not like gonna be for everybody, but it's gonna be like the entry level, entry level card. And speaking of entry level, NVIDIA is entering in the merger acquisition phases of everything. We have the idea that they're gonna be purchasing ARM sometime soon and they drop the $6.9 billion deal with Mellanox previously, and now that has been completed. Mellanox is now called NVIDIA Networking. And tomorrow, while we're expecting the new GPUs to be announced from NVIDIA, that's not the only announcement that's going on, which I mean, Asus, really, you're gonna have your own announcement on the exact same day to launch your own mechanical key switches? Why? This is the wrong day to do it. Like, I don't care that you're having a launch event for your switches. That's totally fine. And you're, I guess you're launching the 30 series too, but like switches, that's the big thing, switches. And I'm switching my credit card on to buy the PS5. I buy things on credit cards so that I get the points and then I pay it off so that I just get free money from the credit card company. Either way, I'm not a financial divider. Anyways, you can pre-order your pre-order for the PlayStation 5 right now. You just don't know how much it's gonna cost. So you enter your PlayStation ID on Sony's website and it will let you know when the pre-orders go live on the US only. Apparently they're doing this based on like your PlayStation activity and making sure that like they're giving it out to people who actually are using PlayStation already, which is kind of neat. But the fact that we don't have a price yet and like, this is a weird, like, we're not gonna tell you who gets it, but some people are gonna get it. And it may be you or it might not be you. And you'll just, you'll have to, f this is just the wrong way to do it, Sony. You're confusing people. I don't know what's going on here. And Sony knows what's going on though. 
when it comes to PC because they announced in their corporate report from 2020 that they're exploring expanding first party titles to the PC platform even more. You can find it here on page 43 of that corporate report saying that they're gonna be doing that in order to promote further growth in our profitability. Apparently they're making heck of cash from the PC sales. Do it, do it. That way I don't have to buy a PS5. I'm still gonna buy a PS5, dang it because it's not gonna be out by the time I wanna play the game. Dang it, you got me, Sony. And Corsair's got me with an introductory line of power supplies that are gonna face RGB. These likely, I don't know if these are gonna be NVIDIA GPU compatible, but that since they're supposed to be the entry level CX, I don't know that they would have a 12 pin. Anyways, they're gonna have RGB fans. Neat. And then Cryorig's also teasing an upcoming new generation of CPU coolers, which is awesome. You can see the picture here coming Foon. That's a five there. But just like Danny from Nern on a Budget says, I wanted to be excited, but I've lost hope every time I ask them about coming back to the American market at reasonable prices, I've been met with no response. They left the American market. And now what, what do we do? I don't know what we do. I have to cry a rig. I want to be excited, but you, you give me little reason. And Apple found little reason from Epic to keep them on their platform with them officially pulling the plug on Epic's developer account. They are now no longer on iOS or Mac OS. This is not just Fortnite, but Epic's other stuff going down as well. This is even though a judge said that this probably wasn't the right way to go about it and this was an overreaction. Apple did it anyway, silly judge. You saying it's wrong just means I have to pay another one. Haha! -ha. Does this affect you? Were you playing Fortnite on your phones? Let me know down below in the comments. And let's talk about some historic stuff that happened for Elon Musk's company over the weekend. It wasn't just the Neuralink event that happened on Friday, but it was also the fact that SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 rocket, which marked the 100th launch from SpaceX, as well as the first polar launch in 50 years, which just means that it flies around the poles instead of around the equator. And it's more uh, dangerous, I guess, because it flies over land. And then if something breaks, up it could cause damage but apparently the way spacex did it was all good 100 launches and a polar launch making it a historic weekend for spacex and then obviously Neuralink did get announced they're testing into pigs at this moment it's kind of it's cool we'll have to see how this moves forward they said that the first implementation is going to be for paraplegics trying to get the communication between the brain and the legs to actually be communicated with again however it's just in pigs i'm just waiting for somebody to create an edm remix of this first part what you're the, the beeps you're hearing are real-time signals from the neural link in gertrude's head i mean the the pigs boop in their nose slaps okay i need i need somebody to auto-tune me to this, because this is great, I love this. And then lastly, Tesla's new autopilot update has some key features which are actually quite nice. They are now going to detect speed limits, whereas previously they relied on a map system where it, if it was wrong in the map system, your, your autopilot was set to the speed limit that it thought it was, not the actual speed limit that it was. So now it can actually read it, which is good and helpful. But then on top of that, it's now going to detect green lights and give you a little alert so that if you fall asleep at the wheel, you'll just go, to, hey, go, go, you need to move, okay? Because previously they could stop at red lights and now they will alert you when it's time to go at green lights, which is just nifty. Okay, the future of cars is here and the future of this episode of Hot News is not because this is over. It's over. We're done. Big thanks again to everybody who showed up for the charity stream. Really appreciate you. Every single one, $43,000 is an insane number to raise in 24 hours. So I'm just thankful for everybody that showed up, including our sponsors. And I will make sure that the giveaways go out shortly. Don't forget to come watch us live tomorrow, September 1st, noon Eastern is when the announcement of NVIDIA's next gen cards are happening. We will be live over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. Come check us out over there. We're gonna be streaming it, talking about it. And that's it. I'll see you maybe tomorrow. We might do a video after the live announcement. We'll see how that goes. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to hot news things that we do here. And Brett with his hot pink crosshawk. I'm lovely. You know I am. You know it's true. Bye.